Hi booktube, Aaron here, hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to do the mid-year book freakout tag. Uh, this is one of those sort of perennial tags that people do um, yeah, once, <laughs> once every year. And um, I think this is the third time I've done this now, which would mean I've been on booktube for two years now, which is a little bit crazy. Um, and yeah, it's just an assessment of the, uh, the year's reading so far. So there are there are fifteen prompts. Uh, I don't have answers for all of them, but I uh, I make up for it at the end. Um, so the first prompt is the best book you've read so far this year. There are quite a few books I've read that uh, you might say they were uh, favourites or five stars or or, or whatever. Um, I think out of all of those, there's one that I've been really really relishing and I keep thinking about and. Out of all of the books I've read so far this year, it's the one that I've gone back and reread within a couple of months of reading it the first time, um, and that's the Do No Elegies by uh, Raina Maria Rilke, and Rilke's a poet I've enjoyed in the past. Um, I'd, I'd read the Do No Elegies before, uh, but I picked up this translation, this new to me translation, by um, by Vita and Edward Sackville West. And just really, really enjoyed it, and it helped the first time through. It helped bring the the cycle of poems um, just into a slightly better focus for me, and having that feeling that I was beginning to understand the poems a little bit better um, back in maybe February or March when I read them the first time. Um, I felt like immediately I needed to reread them, uh, but I didn't pounce on that. Um, at, at the first opportunity, so I let it sit a while, and then just in the last week or so, I've been I've actually reread them twice this week. <laughs> um, so I reread them in dribs and drabs, um, and then just today, so this morning, and then um, at lunchtime as well, um, I I just um, sort of read them through in two sittings, uh, and it, they're just amazing poems about impermanence and coming to terms with change and our relationship to um, misfortune and misery <laughs> um, but also finding hope um, in all of that as well um, and it's yeah there's, there's really weird ethereal uh, poems that they're, they're really beautiful I can't really summarize them uh, any better than that um, but yeah and even though I'd really enjoyed Rilke in the past uh, and I enjoyed these the first time I read them uh, but I didn't get them and it's just kind of shot him up as um actually I'll <laughs> I'll get into that in a minute in a minute but it's um yeah so some of my favorite poems now um it's just a, a new sort of discovery that I love these poems so much so the Duino Elegies I'd really recommend if you like kind of ethereal <laughs> poetry uh, number two, the best sequel that you've read so far this year. Um, I realised I haven't really read um, much from any series. I have um, started, um, I suppose, a duology so far this year, um, and a, a trilogy as well. Uh, but they were just the first books. Uh, so the closest thing to a sequel uh, that I could mention uh, would be Proust, and I read uh, volumes three and four of Remembrance of Things Past, this year, um, so they would be the Gamont's Way and uh, the Cities of the Plain, and I've recently finished Cities of the Plain, I'm going to be moving on uh, to the Captive soon, so that's kind of the closest thing to a sequel, even though it's really just volumes within a you know, stupidly big <laughs> novel, um, so yeah, that's the closest thing. Uh, number three is a new release that you haven't read yet, but you'd like to. Um, I don't have a, an answer for this. If if one comes up, then um, <laughs> I'll let you know. Uh, but uh, there's nothing at the moment I'm, I've got my eye on in terms of eye, release, uh, eye releases, new releases. Uh, number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And um, I've actually got two answers for this. They aren't really new books, but they're new translations. So there's Michael Katz's a uh, new translation of The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky later on this year. 
um, so I'm, I'm toying with getting that or even pre-ordering that um, and as well uh, Emily Wilson's translate, uh, translation of the Iliad is also due to come out this autumn as well um, so both of those are, are books I'd like to get um, and I'd <laughs> love to read um, so yeah they're, they're, they're definitely on my on my watch list number five biggest disappointment so far this year um, that would probably be Memphis by um, Tara M. Stringfellow. Um, not, not that I had massive aspirations for the book, but you know I, I did sort of hope, have my hopes up that it would be a book I'd enjoy. And um, although there were plenty of sort of admirable qualities and things, I, I just couldn't get away from the feeling that the book was kind of unfinished and a little bit rushed. Um, and so that kind of marred the whole experience for me. Number six, the biggest surprise, um, and this is a surprise probably for two reasons, um, and it's A Time of Gifts by Patrick Lee Fermer, one of those other kind of five-star books uh, that I've been reading this year. Um, and one is that I just discovered that this is a, a voice that I really love. I just really love the way that um, Patrick Lee Fermer writes. It's really warm and welcoming, um, and but it, yeah, it's just really fun as well <laughs> and um, but it also just reminded me or pointed out to me that I really enjoy travel writing um, and it's a genre I haven't really gotten into but I really want to get into after reading this um, and it, it kind of makes sense because there's this there's this map at the beginning uh, sort of um, you know so you can sort of go through the journey with him um, and sort of track it. Um, and I, I realised that's kind of exactly what I did um, when I was reading Lord of the Rings. I, I'd always look at the maps and, and see where they were and part of the appeal to Lord of the Rings when I was reading them as a kid and also uh, last year when I reread them um, was, um, yeah, was, was the map and the journey. Um, and so I kind of put two and two together and just realised that travel writing is something I really really love uh, so I'm building up a, a small collection of, of travel writing uh, just because of that book uh, then the next prompt is favorite new author so a debut author or a new to you author um, so Patrick Lee Fermer would be one there um, another one an author I read for the first time although definitely not a new writer either would be Edith Wharton. I read The Age of Innocence. I think again this was um, probably one of my favourite books um, of the year so far and just her writing is amazing. Um, so she's definitely at least one of my favourite writers that I've encountered for the first time this year. And then Rilke as well um, and he's not necessarily a favourite new author but he's a new favourite author. So he's an author I've known about and I've been reading uh, for a, a few years now, um, but it's only this year um, that I've sort of realised that he's one of my favourites, and he's definitely one of my favourite poets now. I, I don't have a top ten list of uh, my favourite poets, but I, I expect he will be on that top ten. Um, then moving on, we've got uh, newest fictional crush, <laughs> and I don't really have a serious answer for this but um, I do have uh, Marma, what's his name, Marmaladov from Crime and Punishment um, <laughs> and that's because he he gets run over <laughs> and his, his name is Marmaladov, you know it's just like marmalade or, or jam <laughs> so I suppose he's a bit of a, a fictional crush um, and um, yeah, that, that was a scene I wasn't expecting in, in Crime and Punishment uh, when I, I read that the other week. Uh, then, number nine, newest favourite character. I actually found this quite hard. Maybe I'm not so much of a, a character reader. Um, but certainly, um, is it Ellen uh, Alenska from uh, The Age of Innocence? Um, she's definitely one of those sort of highlights in terms of characters that I've read so far this year and I realised she's quite similar in, in a few respects to Helen um, Huntington from The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and the fact that one is 
Ellen and the other is, is Helen. Um, I found that quite interesting. Um, I was just watching uh, Shelley Swearengen's mid-year recap tag. She mentioned Demon Copperhead. Um, and although Demon Copperhead, uh, I, it was a big surprise to me. I did really quite enjoy that book. Uh, it hasn't really made it onto my list of favourite books, but it was a, a really good novel. Um, and probably a lot of that sort of feeling of my admiration is really down to Demon as a character. Um, and she was his um, sort of favourite character of the year so far. And um, yeah, he, he's definitely one of, he's, he'll probably be at the end of the year, one of my favourite characters so far this year. Then number 10, uh, the, a book that made you cry or uh, the saddest book you've read so far. That would probably be How High We Go in the Dark. Um, I've probably read sadder books this year. Um, but that is the one book that um, actually made me cry. And I think that's just down to the the writing and how he just decided to convey uh, sort of those particular situations and experiences. Um, yeah, just the way he rendered it, I suppose, um, was really effectful. Uh, effectful? Effective. Um, so that, that, that got me going a little bit. Um, I don't think any other books have really got me crying, although if we were to probably look at them, Kind of critically, there's the, 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 there are probably sadder books I've read. Uh, number 11 is a book that made me happy. Um, and that will probably be the book of... <laughs> that will probably make me happy. Um, anyway, it's the, the Book of Imaginary Beings uh, by Jorge Luis Borges. Um, and it's just a wonderful, quirky book. Um, it's an, an encyclopedia of mythical and imaginary animals from all over folklore, mythology and, and literature. Um, and, it, and there are these cool illustrations. And it's just fun and, and quirky. Um, and you're getting that, that thing that I love in Borges, which is different books talking to each other. Um, and they're all talking to each other in here as well, um, even though it's just fleeting mentions. Um, and it's also the kind of thing I would have just really loved as a kid as well just to see all these weird uh, creatures um, and to find out where they came from and sort of where they fit in, in mythology and um, in, in literature and stuff. That's the kind of thing I would have really loved as a kid. So I kind of felt like a kid uh, when I was reading it. Um, and then where are we? Number 12, favourite uh, book to film adaptation you saw this year. So I, I haven't seen any sort of new adaptations, I don't think this year, um, but I've seen a couple of adaptations I really liked, um, so pretty much straight after reading The Age of Innocence, I went and watched the Scorsese film, um, and really liked that, uh, I thought it was a, a really good adaptation, um, and it just got me thinking a little differently about what I've read, and sort of brought so certain things to light, so that, that was really good, it kind of kept uh, the book alive um, in, in my mind, um, a little longer there and also I also watched um, Apocalypse Now for the first time this year as well um, and I, again I think that's a, a just a great adaptation of The Heart of Darkness um, and now that's that's been done I can't really imagine someone um, you know making an, an adaptation of Heart of Darkness <laughs> sort of after Apocalypse Now has been made it's just one of those really iconic films that is a great work of art in its own right but now that that book has been adapted in that way, I just can't see how any anyone would do it differently. Um, so yeah, that was a really, really spellbinding experience. Number 13, favorite review you've written so far this year or for BookTube, favorite video that you've made so far? Uh, there are probably quite a few, um, but I, I quite enjoyed, well, I quite enjoyed, I, I really quite enjoyed <laughs> doing uh, the Q&A. Uh, just last week, I um, I don't know, it felt like a bit of a gamble for me, I suppose, because I didn't know whether it, was, it would be something I'm, I'd be all that good at, um, whether I'd make <laughs> any sense when answering the questions and, and things like that. Uh, so it felt like a bit of a gamble, um, but it was actually really, really lovely. Uh, the questions were great. Um, it took much longer <laughs> to, uh, to answer them than I expected as well. 
Uh, so that was a, a nice uh, surprise, and yeah, it, it just felt like a nice, um, just, just a nice conversation. So, so that was really cool. Um, then number fourteen, the most beautiful book you have bought so far this year or uh, received, um, and I think so. The Borges, the um, Book of Imaginary Beings, would definitely be up there. I love the the deckled edges. I have. <laughs> Slightly destroyed it around the top here. It's come into contact with some water, um, and the same can be said for the Rilke book. Just grab it. Again, this is really lovely as well. Um, but I've <laughs> again, it's come into contact with some water, so that the spine is rubbed away a bit. Uh, but even underneath, I'm not sure if you can see the title there, but it's a really lovely object, and you know, it, inside, it's it's really great as well. Um, you know, with, with each elegy, it's got um, just that little title page. Um, so it's, um, yeah, really, really lovely book. Uh, but other than those two, um, in terms of just for the cover alone, really, um, it would be We by Yev, um, yeah, Yevgen <laughs> Yevgeny Zamyatin. Um, I just really, really love that cover. I just finished this as well, and it was, it was, it was pretty good. Um, Got me thinking, um, so um, I'll, yeah, I'll let you know what I thought soon uh, with that one. And then we're on to the last question, and I've got a massive pile of books just for this question, uh, because it's what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, and for me, there's there's definitely no need in there really, and um, it's really just what books do I want to read? Um, and these are at least the ones that are calling to me now. Um, a couple in here that I've agreed to read or set my heart on. Uh, but the rest, you know, we'll just see how it goes. So this is just what, what I'm thinking at the moment. So I've got three books that I was really hoping to read earlier this year. I had sort of listed down as books I just wanted to read this year. Um, and so one of them would be um, Austerlitz by W.G. Sebald. There's the um, uh, there's Invisible Man. By Ralph Ellison. I, th I think I haven't picked this up uh, just because I've just read Crime and Punishment. I think if I hadn't have just read that I'd, I'd probably be reading this now um, but um, I don't know I just felt like from what I've, I've heard bits from the sort of opening pages of, of, of this book and it, it does seem very um, Dostoevsky-esque um, and so I, I didn't want to Sort of crowd out uh, Dostoevsky or Ellison. I kind of wanted to uh, come to each on, on their own terms. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space, and then I'll probably get to Ellison, um, hopefully a little later on this year. And I'd also really quite like to read um, at least something by uh, Thomas Brown this year. I just haven't got round to him yet. Um, he's been waiting patiently on the bookshelf. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll get to him soon. Uh, there, there are two books that I, I know I'm definitely going to read, uh, or at least <laughs> I hope I will, uh, this year. Uh, but one I'll be reading next month, and that's King Lear. I've just put my Kindle in the in the pile so I remember, because I'll probably read it on my Kindle. And I've agreed to read that with uh, David Wiley, and it's the, the first time in, in a little while that we've read something together. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to reading that with, with David. Um, I need to let him know what what I'm thinking about when to read it and how much to read <laughs> per week or whatever. So um yeah, need to do that. Um, and then the other one I've got my heart set on for this year is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy um, and um, Classics and Company. I'm going to be reading this at the end of the year. Um, so um, that's a reading um, kind of a reading group year long event hosted by uh, Anna Novella and Micah Cummins um, and so I've just sort of slated this for the end of the year um, and yeah I just know it's going to be waiting patiently for me uh, in December um, and then <laughs> still got quite a few more books I'd like to read this year but <laughs> we've got some more Brontes uh, so I've recently read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall um, and it just got me thinking about um, I don't know just which Bronte is, is, is my favourite so I want to 
uh, just read as much by them as I can this year. Um, so I'll hopefully maybe <laughs> read Jane Eyre. Hopefully maybe make of that what you will. Um, but I'll probably get to uh, Wuthering Heights first. I got this uh, Penguin Deluxe, Deluxe, Deluxe edition of it um, last year. Um, and I just haven't got to it yet, so I'll um, yeah be rereading this at some point. Really not speaking uh, terribly well today. <laughs> uh, then there's To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I read my first um, Virginia Woolf novel last year and uh, would like to read some more. Like I'd like to reread The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Uh, I'd like to get to uh, Between the Woods and the Water. By Patrick Lee Firmer, so the kind of following on from the Time of Gifts, um, the next leg of his journey. And while we're still talking about travel writing, I would quite like to read this. This is *The Border* by Erica Fartland, um, and it's about all the countries that border Russia. Um, and I, I just picked this up recently, but I, I would rather like to get to it um, relatively soon. But again, we'll see. And then we've got, what's that, four more books? <laughs> um, so, so these, um, I suppose these aren't all novels I'd like to finish, but the next three are going back to short stories, which is um, sort of intermittently through the year, something I've been enjoying this year. I think once we get into autumn, um, so, I mean, October's only three, four months away now. Um, three months away, is it? Yeah, that's scary. Um, anyway, Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I'd quite like to read some more Edgar Allan Poe because I don't think I've touched this since maybe January or, or February, something like that. Uh, and Sherlock Holmes as well. I've been really enjoying Sherlock Holmes this year. Again, I don't think I've read any stories since maybe April, something like that. Uh, but I've been watching, um, so... Um, <laughs> Uh, more or less every Friday night, I go to my sister's house and we have homemade pizza and we watch murder mysteries. Uh, so we've watched all of the um, uh, Poirot TV shows with David Suchet. We've w watched Rosemary and Time. <laughs> we've watched some Miss Marple. Um, and now we're making our way through the adventures of Sherlock Holmes with Jeremy Brett, uh, which have been really, really amazing. So, so even if I don't read much more Sherlock Holmes. I'm still, I'm still kind of partially living in that world. And again, uh, Lydia Davis as well. Um, I've been making really slow progress uh, with Lydia Davis. So I'd like to read a bit more this year. But really, even though there's, there's this big pile of books that I've just gone through, the one sort of big aim for, for the rest of this year is to finish Proust. Um, and I ideally would like to finish Proust by the end of August, if I can. We'll see how long it takes, but um, I've got three volumes to go. Uh, so this, this book here has, I think it's The Captive, The Fugitive, and then Time Regained, um, all in it. Um, so it's the three shortest volumes. Um, altogether, it's... Uh, 1100 pages which you know it, 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 it's um it's shorter than one piece so um <laughs> it's kind of manageable um so we'll, 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 we'll see anyway i think that's everything yeah so that's the end of the um the mid-year book recap tag for this year for any sort of eagle-eyed people um i did have in that last question as many books as there were questions <laughs> in the whole tag um, but there we go that's yeah that was that was I think appropriately um, free countish um, anyway I'm, I'm not talking terribly well so I'm just gonna, just gonna leave it there so thanks for watching um, and I'll, I'll see you soon bye